what did you make of what we saw at the Etihad in, in terms of the, the styles of both teams? Um, I thought Arsenal were going to win the game beforehand because of what they'd done to Liverpool. I watched Liverpool run all over about five teams on the bounce. Newcastle, West Ham, two of them. And then they tried to do it to Arsenal and they couldn't. Arsenal sort of played out past Liverpool's press. You know, and Liverpool are a physically fit team, but they couldn't do it to Arsenal. Arsenal sort of were better than them on the day. Mm. And I thought they might do that to Man City yesterday, but I'm a bit undecided. <laughs> Is it a tactical uh, planned nil-nil draw from Arteta, brilliantly pulled off mm -hmm. the way he's done it, or should they have gone for it? And was it a bit, I mean, in the lower leagues, you'd call it parasite football. What's that then? So what he's done yesterday, it, Trapattoni, the Italian, great Italian mm -hmm. manager who ended up managing the Republic of Ireland, 4-4-2, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trapattoni. That's exactly what they've done yesterday. Two banks of four, two strikers, drop back in your own half, see if you can get through us. When you try and pay passes that don't exist into pockets that don't exist, we're going to steal the ball off you and try and score from your mistakes. Okay. So that's what Arsenal tried to do yesterday. You have the ball. We know you're going to have it, Man City. But what we're going to do, we're going to kill every pocket. So Foden, Silver, they can't get in any holes on the half turn and run at us. So they all sunk back. Mm -hmm. So there's no space in behind. Uh, so your goalkeeper's got, you know, he's on his line and he's, like, he's, he's got no decision to come for a through ball or not. Um, and... What they do, they wait till you make a bad pass or you cross a ball into the box and they've got more in there than you have and they break on you. Mm. So they don't construct attacks with the ball. They pinch goals from your mistakes, counter-attacking, basically. It's true, though. You're right about the... I think a lot of us have sort of been thinking about what we saw yesterday and was it a defensive masterclass or was it just negative mm. football from Arsenal? We'll I find mean, out. Well, we? Yes, we will, certainly. But it was their lowest possession in a game this season. They only had 28% across yeah. that whole 90 minutes. That's very different from an Arsenal side that tends to dominate on the ball and with the ball. So heavily possession-based. There's only been a few games this season where the, the opposition has uh, had more of the ball in games. Clearly, it felt like the message was, let's contain, let's snuff out City, let's make them become scrappy at times. Because there was nothing for them to... There was, there was no way of breaking Arsenal down. Defensively, they were superb, without a doubt. And you can't be critical of that. It's just maybe... I mean, I think Adrian Durham last, uh, yesterday was, was at the game and he was calling it a very poor game just because of the, how the two teams played and how the fact that City couldn't break down Arsenal. And it, they got frustrated by yeah, Arsenal. Yeah, well, Trapattoni used to spoil the game on purpose. So if we make this a, an entertaining game, we're going to get beat by Man City. If we make this a basketball match, mm. Man City have got bigger guns than us. So you try and win another way. So yeah. the cle a clever way, Trapattoni used to do it. Arteta yesterday, as he's played Jesus one side, Saka. They were sitting in front of the fullbacks. He's got Jorginho and Rice, Odegaard and um, the, the German from Chelsea. Havertz. Havertz. Sorry. <laughs> 25 yards back in their own half saying, come on, try and get through us. There are no pockets. They don't exist. Um, but what we're going to do, we might do you on set plays because Arsenal are very good at it. They've got they've got a big, strong team. There are, I don't think they could have done what they've done yesterday, last year, well, with it, the players there. Yeah, let's talk about that in just a moment. But before that, let's hear from Mikel Arteta and what he had to make on what we saw yesterday. You know, you want to win the game. We're prepared to, to win it. We could not win it uh, Make sure we draw it, and, and we've done that. And 11 months ago, we were here, and the story was very different. And you have to continue to make steps as a team and try to improve. And today we've done that, and um, and we're still many more to come. Obviously, it generates belief. It generates continues the momentum and the, and the good position that we are in. And um, and the fact that the boys are there and, and they want more individually, they demand themselves. But I could have done this better, and we haven't done this. Well enough as we train, that tells you how much they want it, you know, and uh, and we will try our best to continue what we are doing. So that's what Mikel Arteta then had to say after that goalless draw. And look, I think a lot of people, like I've mentioned, probably were sat down to watch that game and were expecting a fierce toe-to-toe -to -toe contest. That's not what we got. We got a very different approach from Arsenal. But do you think, bear in mind, they've not won at the Etihad since 2015. You sort of said they wouldn't have got that result this time last year. Have they matured then in, in the season? Well, 
I don't think they could have put that defensive performance out like they put out, you know, playing like they did 4 4 2. They've got. They've, if you look at what Guardiola done, he's, he's in the end, the changes he's made, he's thought, right, we can't get through this team. We can't play through them. They, they, they're too compact as a team. 4 4 2, we can't get through the middle. So he took Foden off, who couldn't get a kick. Mm. He moved Silva, he took Kovacic off, put Silva back into midfield, brought Grealish and Doku on, and tried to go round the outside of Man City. And Doku got to the byline a few times. He, mm. His, his mm. final ball wasn't the best. And he got a few cutbacks. I mean, Hoyland missed the chance to square it for Rodri, didn't he? Mysteriously missed the ball. But you look at Arteta's substitutions, then he brought Thomas Partey on, who's six foot three. And he brought Martinelli on. It was like as if he, he's planned the whole thing. Right, we'll keep it at nil-nil. We won't try and score until 15 minutes to go. I'll bring Martinelli on. So and then he had why? a chance. If it, by the way, Cross hard as well. Sorry. By the way you're talking, and by the fact they disrupted City, they didn't allow them any rhythm really in the game, why are we not lauding Arteta more then for that? I mean, look, we've had a message in from Greg who said, like, last season got beat badly. This season, we've taken four points and haven't conceded a goal against City. Yeah. I, I Like... Two years ago, I thought he was on the right road. The minute he got rid of Aubameyang, he got control of the dressing room, uh, for me. And the signings that they were making in the past, like Pepe, like signing talent, but with no desire. Players with no desire, weren't playing for the shirt, just talented players, trying to patch them all together. And it stemmed from, I mean, without going too far back, you remember they let about 15 contracts run down and mm -hmm. they had, ended up having mm -hmm. to give Sanchez and... Um, Aaron Rams, they were, they were like 300 grand a week. Mm -hmm. um, and the dressing room was sort of ruptured. Um, and he's got control of the group now. He's going on, the, he's on the right road. He's added Declan Rice to that group. He's added two, uh, for me, the great players, Zenchenko and Jesus, like head and shoulders above talent wise and attitude. And it spread right through their camp. And I, I said about three weeks ago, um, I think Arsenal are going under the radar, creeping to the title, and that game. But that game yesterday, they both damaged each, each other, haven't they? They both took two points off each other. Mm -hmm. Well, um, as it is then, Manchester City are third in the table on sixty-four points. Arsenal second; they dropped down to second on sixty-five, two points ahead. Liverpool, who took advantage of going into top spot with that victory over Brighton before the game at the Etihad. So we'll reflect next about what that means for Liverpool. Does it mean that they are now the favourites to go on and win this title in Jurgen Klopp's final season in charge? We also want to hear from all of you this morning. Uh, a few of you already already texting. We appreciate that to 81089. You can give us a call as well to have your say on what we saw at the Etihad. Was it a defensive masterclass or were you disappointed by Arsenal not going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Manchester City. 03717 That's the number to call us on right here on TalkSport. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.